Well, we've just heard then from our new health minister, Jean Zwistowski. Now it's time to bring in the voice of Alberta stakeholders. Here in studio, David Egan, executive director of Friends of Medicare. Guy Smith is president of the Alberta Union of Provincial Employees. And Dr. Tom Noseworthy is with us, director of the Center for Health Policy and Studies at the University of Calgary. He also heads up the U of C's Department of Community Health Sur Services. Good to have you all with us, gentlemen. Thank you. David, let me start with you. Health care spending, a huge item in this budget. It's up 16.6% .6 for nearly $15 million this year. I'm not even going to ask if you're happy because I know you are. Yeah. Albertans still, though, having trouble finding a family doctor. There's wait times. What are the concerns here? We're not out of the woods yet just by throwing money at this, are we? Well, no, and uh, I think though we have to pause and give credit where credit is due, and it's the thousands of Albertans who spoke up against more health cuts that finally caught the ear of this government and we're this is hopefully uh, the start of something better. Um, we've seen considerable loss of boots on the ground, healthcare professionals over the last few years, and that's where the access, the emergency wait times have really started to pile up. And so, I, in a way, I'm looking at this as um, the repair bill that's come in for all the damage we saw over the last two years, and um, the government recognizes that they have to pay it. Okay. Dr. Tom Noseworthy in Calgary, we've still got to find savings, though, don't we? Well, I had uh, mixed feelings about this budget uh, as I was thinking about it before I even saw it. And I wanted to see two things in it. I certainly needed to see a deficit elimination plan because that deals with shortfalls. But I wanted to see a predictable funding trajectory for the next three to five years. And indeed, I got it. Uh, the problem is I think we got way more than we should have gotten. Uh, I think there's two truisms that we need to really take to heart. Uh, the first is the more wealth you have, the more you tend to spend on health care. That's true across this world. The second thing is you can't buy more health by continuing to put more dollars into health care. There is a limit, particularly if you're taking those dollars from other programs that contribute to health and well-being, whether it's education, low-income support, or otherwise. So I'm kind of happy that the two uh, key issues have been addressed, but I actually am really surprised and negatively so that we have not done anything to control cost growth. Six percent increases are way above cost of living increases. They're way above population growth. And for the last 35 years in Medicare, one of the problems we have is we continue to spend beyond our means, beyond the cost of living increases for all except a few years in the 90s. And so to me, six percent for three years, followed by 4.5, I think we're going to have a lot of trouble dealing with negotiations, suppliers, and so on, and I don't think we got cost control in this. You talk about this. negotiations, and we've got Guy Smith from the AUPE mm -hmm. sitting with us right now. Uh, not sure if healthcare workers are popping the champagne tonight or not, but there yeah. is money in the future. You've got to be happy about that. Still some job cuts, though. Yeah, um, we're, no one's popping champagne. I think uh, healthcare workers are busy in, uh, in facilities providing care to Albertans mm -hmm. like they've always done. And I'll tell you, there's still a stretch on staff. They're still working their feet off, uh, making sure that Albertans get that service. So if, if the money's going into hiring more staff, which it needs to, if it goes into hiring staff for the newer facilities that are being built, then that's certainly a positive move. Tell me uh, if you feel like there's a shift in this government, and it, particularly in terms of health care right now. There's a huge shift, and they, they were pushed to where they're at now by, uh, as David said, by the uprising of Albertans and by our campaign to save Alberta Hospital and Friends of Medicare putting health care front and center. The government had to respond. David Egan, what's the first thing that you want to see Zwazeski and Alberta Health Services then do with this stable funding? Well, I think it's absolutely vital that we start to re-engage those jobs that have just not been filled over these past months. Uh, the uh, minister said he was not going to do bed closures, but we see bed closures almost every day around the province where positions are just not being filled. Healthcare professionals are the ones who actually deliver health care. Um, we have half as many hospital beds as we did 20 years ago and a million more people in this province, you know. And really 6%, we saw that last year, with the way the numbers come out in the wash, that just kind of holds the line. And health care is expensive, but 
what else are you going to spend public money on? What else is more fundamental to the security and good governance of a province? Okay. We will have more with our Alberta budget fact checkers coming up next on Alberta Primetime. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here and your comments on the health care aspect of this budget tonight. Stay with us. You're watching Alberta Primetime.